want to talk to you about seven rapture theories. Now, some of these are popular. Uh, some of them might not be as well known and whatever else. But I'm going to show you that each of the six that I have listed here, each one has some issues when it comes to dealing with the scriptures. And the seventh one I don't have written down here yet because that's the one that I believe is the correct one that lines up with scripture the most. Okay? Don't skip ahead to the end. Watch as we continue. Okay? I know it's tempting. But uh, rapture theory number one, and these are all, you know, I say the word rapture. It will be rapture when we get to see Jesus Christ. We'll be very joyful and very happy. But I'm talking about being called up before the time of Jacob's trouble, as the scriptures teach. Called up, the catching up there is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 through 58. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 through 18. And of course, the time of Jacob's trouble is the correct term. It's never called the Great Tribulation, for those who are new to this whole issue. Um, Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7, describes the time being the time of Jacob's trouble. Um, the time that's coming is for the purification of the nation of Israel, not the church. Okay? Jesus Christ died on the cross. He shed his blood. His blood washes away all your sins. You don't need to go into a time of purification. The Jews that rejected Jesus as their Messiah, they do need to go into that time and uh, have the scriptures revealed to them, particularly the book of Revelation, and, have, and they'll see how it lines up with the book of Daniel back in the Old Testament, which they would accept. They accept Daniel, reject Revelation, but not in the future. So let's look at the first theory. Now this is one I grew up with. I heard this is the Tim LaHaye, a lot of the, you know, John Hagee, a lot of these guys. I'm not even sure if, I think Tim LaHaye is dead now, but uh, John Hagee, I don't know if he espouses this anymore, but this was the popular one. Okay, rapture theory number one. The Dome of the Rock, the Mosque of Omar over there, that's actually Fort Antonio, <laughs> another issue. The Dome of the Rock is destroyed. Okay, and this triggers some kind of war, if it's World War III or not, I don't know, but it makes some kind of a war. Okay, now right in this area here, somewhere between the destruction, after the destruction, and in the time of war, somewhere in there, I have a little blue arrow drawn, meaning up goes the body of Christ. This is the rapture. Boom, up we go. Okay, and this war that comes between the Jews and the Muslims because of the Dome of the Rock being destroyed. Uh, however it would happen, maybe it would be a war that would trigger the Dome of the Rock destruction. This would lead to the Antichrist appearing and he would bring, bring a peace treaty between the Jews and the Muslims. Okay, very popular theory there and very false. Uh, nowhere in Scripture is there any kind of a peace treaty between the Jews and the Muslims. All right, let me show you the verse of Scripture that they'll go to. Daniel chapter 9 Take your King James Bible and turn in Daniel chapter 2, Daniel chapter 9. I'll show you this thing. Um, Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease, and for the overspreading of abom abominations he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Did you see any mention in there about Muslims? Islam, Jews and Muslims going to have a peace treaty? It doesn't say that. It says confirm the covenant. And if you actually do some research, you'll see that in fact the Vatican has already been signing agreements with the nation of Israel to turn the city of Jerusalem into an international city. Okay? So there aren't any kind of peace treaties. That thing is a, it's a, it's a false thing, whatever you want to call it, false operation, whatever, not really false flag operation, but it's, it's, it's a lie. It's a smokescreen to cover up for the fact that the two most powerful factions in the world right now are the Zionist Jews and the fascist Catholics. Okay, and you get into the conspiracy stuff and you start to research that, you realize, yeah, there's Freemasonic Jews that are very powerful and very satanic. That's the reason for the time of Jacob's trouble. And uh, there's Roman Catholics. You get into the Catholic knighthoods, the Knights of the Equestrian Order, the Knights of Malta, the Knights of you know, the Templars and things like this, Knights of Columbus. You get into all of those things. They have their secret societies. The Jews have their secret societies. And they're all very rich and very powerful. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. But uh, I have to reject rapture theory number one because there is no scripture for this peace treaty between the Jews 
and the Muslims. And I'd be curious who came up with this peace treaty nonsense because it's not in Scripture. And I challenge anybody out there, you disagree with me, show me the Scriptures that says that there's a peace treaty between the Jews and the Muslims that the Antichrist signs. Okay, it's not there. It's confirming a covenant. Rapture theory number two. The rapture and children disappear. In other words, the saints and then children that it would be under what we call under the age of accountability. Uh, children that are too young to make a decision one way or another for salvation. Rapture and children disappear. And of course, everybody's going to be blaming everybody else. And this would trigger World War III. All right. And it would be just people, you know, maybe nuclear war or, or just really bad fighting and things like that. And the Antichrist would show up to bring peace. Okay. A little bit more plausible than, than uh, the first one up here. But there's still a problem. You see, the Antichrist comes to bring peace, but through peace he destroys many. Okay, and Revelation chapter 6 talks about he comes, the, the rider on the white horse is the Antichrist, and he comes conquering and to conquer. So, he's, you know, I guess you could technically say that there's some truth there. He could, you know, come to bring, to put an end to World War III and actually continue the war against certain people and things like that, which brings me into my next theory. Um, but I will say this on rapture theory number two. Um, this is debatable, okay? The thing of children disappearing, okay? I did a whole preacher rapture moment on that. The thing of children being called clean in 1 Corinthians chapter 7 if they have one saved parent. Now, what if you have young children? Um, the catching up happens. Is the Lord going to leave them there? Why would he do that? They're innocent. They haven't done anything they're not saved or lost or whatever else. Um, I believe the children are going to go up personally. Can I show that exact proof? You know, dead and living saints and children, you know, get caught up. No, I can't show that. But just going through the scriptures and things and, and you know, I believe the Lord will save those children. Now, will it be all children or just children that had one saved parent at least or two saved parents? I don't know. I can't say for sure on that. But rapture theory number three, this kind of ties in with number two here. The rapture happens and the possibility of children disappearing as well. But this time it's blamed on Islam. Okay. They'll say, well, look, you know, the, the, these people disappeared there. Maybe there's some, you know, clothes, blood, whatever. There's different theories there um, left behind. And so this must have been some kind of Islamic thing and whatever else. And they could show videos of me and say, he's a Muslim. <laughs> I get called a Muslim. I get called a Jew and, you know, a German Nazi, you know, cause I'm German ancestry, uh, Bavarian to be precise. You can look up the name Denklinger in Bavaria. It was kind of a famous name there. Um, actually a forest named after one of my ancestors. So I'm not Jewish. I am not, uh, Arabic, Islamic, whatever. I've never subscribed to the teachings of Muhammad. I think he was a nut. But here's the whole point. They could say, blame it on Islam and say, look, it's suicide bombing. They, they took out all these children, whatever else. And it could lead to the covenant between the Jews and the Catholics. Okay. The Antichrist could come in there. I believe that the Antichrist is going to be a Pope of some kind or, uh, you know, like ultra Pope or something like that. He might not be just the standard Pope. He might actually come in the, and they'll say, well, Christ has returned. We have to give him his church back and whatever else. I mean, he's going to come and he sits on a throne and he claims to be God. Second Thessalonians chapter two talks about that. Um, what religion currently does that and has done that for, you know, what, 1700 years or something, the Vatican, the Pope, the Pope claims to be God. He calls himself the Holy Father. And people worship him like he's God. Um, what the Antichrist is going to be in the future. But here's the thing. Here is the carrot on the end of the stick, you know, so to speak. You try to get the donkey to move and he won't move. You put a stick out there with a carrot and he starts walking towards it. Um, in other words, the bait. How are you going to get the Jews to submit themselves to the Catholics? with this covenant that they're going to sign. Well, there has to be something there that's very valuable to the Jews that they'd like to have happen. Like uh, the destruction of Islam, conquering Islam. Yeah, 
There was actually uh, some, some of the you viewers out there let me know about a thing called the Winslow Plan, I think is what it was called. And it actually talks about how to destroy Islam. And the guy actually says in there about the Catholic Church will be, you know, more powerful then and whatever. And he says, I know this kind of sounds like Bible prophecy stuff, but no, it's, this is different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, there are plans, in other words, to nuke Mecca and Medina, and which would cause a holy war, a holy jihad from Islam. And the Antichrist comes. He promises peace. But remember, he goes out conquering and to conquer. Who's he going to be fighting? So you got to keep that in mind. All right, there are certain things that we can definitely know about the future. All right? And I'm going to tell you why this is important to, to talk about as Christians here. All right? I'll tell you about that later. But this one, there's a lot of things that could be true on this one. The Antichrist has to go out conquering somebody. So who's it going to be? Well, there's already crusades against Islam. And there has been for a long time. Catholicism has been crusading against Islam. Islam has persecuted the Jews. How are you going to get the two, the Jews and the Catholics, to confirm a covenant together? Winslow plan. Conquer Islam. Okay? The next rapture theory that I've heard, and it's somewhat popular, is rapture will happen and UFO appearance. Okay? Be it demonic type things, appearances in the sky or whatever else, or actual extreme high-tech um, flying type of objects, whatever that would be. Uh, there's plenty of things out there, people, conspiracy things, and whatever else. Um, and whether you believe in UFOs or not, uh, the point is, if something like that showed up after the rapture, if the militaries of the world would launch some kind of secret you know, weaponry and whatever else, and you get into studying some of the secret weaponry that the military has, there's some crazy stuff. Okay, Some of the things that they're admitting to. All right, I mean, there's something there. Could that be used to explain away the rapture? So you have rapture, UFO appearance, and the Antichrist shows up in that time to offer peace. Um, but here's the problem with that. If the Antichrist comes as a UFO occupant, who is he going to go to war with? Okay, I mean, uh, hey, we came and we, we caused all this chaos, you know, took the, these people out and, you know, children as well, more than likely. Um, people wouldn't worship the Antichrist if he did that. Um, if the Antichrist comes to fight against the UFO, you know, invaders or whatever else, um, then you have that problem because what's he conquering? The UFOs came here. How are you conquering? You know, I guess you could technically say he's conquering them. I don't know. But there's kind of the UFO thing's a little bit shaky, quite honestly. Number five, you have the rapture where living and dead saints arise. And that leads to a zombie apocalypse. Have you, heard, have you ever heard of that one? Uh, there's actually been uh, stories that have come out where Homeland Security has had zombie apocalypse training drills, and I think the military has, has as well. Weird stuff. And, of course, they say, well, it's, you know... And, case of a nuclear fallout or whatever else and people are you know walking around uh, not in their right mind and things or chemical attack or whatever else um, but I don't know but that would lead to this quote unquote zombie apocalypse if dead saints would actually arise like they did when Jesus rose from the dead in Matthew chapter 28 and they went into the city and they appeared unto many people if that happens again but this time it's dead Christians that come up uh, and they're walking around before we all get caught up together. Again, the scripture doesn't plainly state that. There's theories. But if that happens, that would certainly lead to chaos, which would birth the Antichrist. Ordo ab cal, Masonic little decree there saying order out of chaos. The best way to bring order and, and a new order is to have a chaotic event that destroys the old order. The phoenix rising out of the ashes, the whole deal. Okay, you can study all that stuff. But here's another theory. Theory number six. Teotwaki. What in the world is that word there? Some kind of you know, Greek or something perhaps. No, it's not. The end of the world as we know it. Okay? Um, right there. That's another one of the theories. Okay? Now this one I wrote in a different way. The end of the world as we know it and the rapture comes after it. Okay? 
and the rapture would be hidden by the chaos that comes as a result of the end of the world as we know it. Now, right now, I just heard in the news thing, came here, checked it, whatever, it's Monday, September, what, 23rd, I think, something like that. And uh, I think it says 23rd over there on the computer. Uh, the whole point is, I just heard over the weekend, that, I just heard now that over the weekend, the Federal Reserve just injected $350 billion into our economy to help bail out the banks. That's a problem. Okay, that's called leading to hyperinflation. That's, uh, I mean, there's, there's a whole lot of stuff I could say on that. Uh, they're trying to trigger another recession and quite possibly a Great Depression where people's fortunes are going to be wiped out. Uh, the banks are really, really, really seriously messed up. You put your money in the bank, they take that money and they spend it on all kinds of stuff and they, they're supposed to be able to send each other money if they need things and whatever else and they couldn't do that so the Federal Reserve had to step in and print $350 billion over the weekend. That's a problem. Or at least in, in, inject it into the you know, economy or whatever. Okay, you, you can't do that. Study the Weimar Republic, the Weimar Republic, to say it properly. Uh, study Zimbabwe. Study all these different countries where they're printing money to, to try and keep the economy going. I mean, 70% of United States gross domestic product, GDP, 70% is consumer debt right now. That's a problem. Okay, that's a big problem. Uh, people are in debt. They're just paying for everything with their credit cards. And I mean, it, it's crazy. Very, very bad. I think it's something like... Uh, Less than half of American households right now have $1,000 in the bank or $1,000 in savings. Some really bad stuff, okay? What if the banking system collapses? What if there's a grid down situation? The end of the world as we know it. Things would get really bad really quickly. Things would get very, very primitive, okay? Survival, you know? And that could happen and the Lord could say, okay, in the midst of that or through some of that or whatever else. I mean, Christians have gone through some rough times in the past. I have never preached as a quote-unquote preacher, rapture preacher. I have never preached that we're going to leave before anything bad happens. Okay? There are theories like that. These first, well, I shouldn't say the first one, but there's four theories here that the rapture would happen before things get really, really ultra bad. But I will... You know, definitely say this one down here is a very real possibility. Things could fall apart first before the body of Christ is called up. You see? And again, what are going to the what would the false posties do then? They would say, Well, see, we went through all this Teotwaki stuff, um, so the, the tribulation has already happened, and hey, look, Christ just appeared. Jesus Christ appeared. See, it wasn't that bad. I mean, a lot of these post tribbers will actually say that the events of Revelation chapter 6 in particular, are really not going to be as bad as the pre-tribbers like to make it out. You know, okay, peace taken from the earth. I think that's pretty bad. You know, famine, you know, pestilence, you know, <laughs> death and hell. Yeah, I think that's pretty bad. Antichrist going out conquering and things starts the whole thing. But you see, this could happen and happen soon. And this rapture, the rapture of the body of Christ could be hidden in that chaos. And the people that get left here, that are left behind, the false converts, and there's plenty of those out there, those people would come out and say, hey, this we're in the Great Tribulation. It has it started. All the wars and everything else, see, it, it started. There's famine because we can't go to the store and buy our food anymore because the economy crashed. Hyperinflation, we can't buy food and things. So there's your famine and, you know, death and hell, and there's a lot of people that die in this, in this time that's coming. See? How close are we to uh, the Lord coming and taking his bride away? We could be pretty close. But in this time, Antichrist appears. See, he could come and bring order out of the chaos there. Bring peace. Restore rule of law, R-O-L, meaning rule of law. Internet 2 could be kicked in at that point in time. Grid down scenario. You can't get online. Your phone doesn't work. None of that stuff. And all of a sudden, Internet 2, you know, the Internet comes back up. The power grid comes back up. Now you got Internet 2 and all those nasty little sermons by the pre-tribbers are gone. 
all those ministries out there that would have told people the truth are gone. They're eliminated. Thus fulfilling back in the book of Amos where the Lord sends a famine in the land of hearing the word of the Lord. Hmm. The Antichrist could confirm the covenant in that time. And the Muslims might, you know, protest it and whatever else. Okay, we're going to go out and, you know, kill a bunch of Muslims now, like they've been doing for a while. And of course, if the economy implodes, which is a sure thing now, it's not even a question anymore. It's not a question of if, but it's, it's going to be a question of when. Um, you can't keep on inflating this phony cash, or cash system here. It's terrible, absolutely terrible. Cashless system will come in and will bring in also an ID system to keep you safe, you see. What is it? Mark of the beast. We're getting close, in other words. You say, well, uh, you said number seven. There's a number seven. What's the number seven rapture theory? Well, let me give you this one. I'll, I'll do it in green, okay? Here, here it is right here. A big question mark. All right. Um, the number seven, the one that I subscribe to is, you can barely even see it there. <laughs> I'll have to draw it over here. I don't know. That's the truth of the matter. Um, you see, the Bible teaches something very simple, and that is that the just shall live by faith. We have to live by faith. And this isn't about setting a date, by the way. Not at all. It's about the, the times and the seasons. Okay, um, There are some things that are happening in our world right now that are pointing to the imminent return of Jesus Christ for His bride. Um, we're getting close. So, um, you're supposed to purify yourself. Let me show you one more verse of Scripture here, and then we'll close this video. Um, 1 John chapter 3. Verse 1 through 3. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Do you realize how much the world doesn't know you? Why? Because they don't know Jesus. They don't understand a lot of the things that I preach, a lot of things that you try to tell your relatives. Verse 2. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. I called post trivers spiritual harlots in another video. And uh, they come out, oh, we're not spiritual harlots. You know, we, we purify ourselves for just because of the love that he had. When you know that Jesus Christ is coming, that things are getting pretty close, you might want to purify yourself. If uh, you're a bride and you realize all of a sudden somebody says, hey, I just saw your husband coming. He's been gone for a while, but uh, you're the groom, your, your, your betrothed husband there, he's on his way. She's going to purify herself. That's my advice to you. We don't know exactly how it's all going to work out. We have, really have no idea. The Bible doesn't give us the exact way that things are going to be when we go up. All right? But you're seeing some things coming together. You know what I mean? So uh, purify your life. Get right with God. That's going to be it. Thank you for watching.